come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie review podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination much like mm. uh, the antagonist in tonight's movie uh you can help us out on this one though it's within the realm of possibility all you got to do is go over to <laughs> wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button all of that stuff helps us get found by characters from outer space who are listening to this podcast mm. right now alpacas possibly do they, do they get space found alpacas yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So who are these <laughs> internet radio superstars? Sean. Holly. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we have moved on to number two of Three. the. Is this? No, this is two. two. Of the two. Uh, top yeah. most yes. voted yep. for movies. Oh, it's our third movie. No, it's the second place movie. Right. That's what I'm saying. It is the third one we've it's done. It's our third yes. one we've done. I know. It's, yeah, yes. second place. It's the third one we've done. That's right. Yes. We got to eliminate the, uh, the the numbering system next year because uh, listeners have asked about that too. Wait, what happened to this one? Right. So we <laughs> asked you to vote for uh, a, a selection of movies in December. You guys voted for the top four uh, movies. We've been working our way up to the number one most voted for movie, we're, which we're watching next week. Stay tuned to the end of this episode, and we'll tell you what it is. But tonight, we watched the movie that was chosen by you, and it was the Color Out of Space. Ah, Color Out of Space. That's no, right, the. not the. Just Color Out of Space. The story is the Color Out of Space from the year twenty twenty. Technically, right? This was a pandemic dump, but I think it was supposed to come out in twenty nineteen. Early twenty twenty. Yeah, I think it was yeah. like film festivals mm-hmm. twenty nineteen. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it feels to me it was like a January release. Yeah, that's why it feels like it was really early. It got very overshadowed very quickly when it came out. Yeah, yeah. Mm because nobody could go see it in the theater, Mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. But it got a theater release. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, like a limited release. A limited. Yeah. 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 It was because then it went to it went to Prime right after that. Um, Did it? Then yeah, I know it was. Yeah. And then eventually Shutter. Like had it as because it's one of those RLJE movies yeah. that Shutter seems to have like the inroads in all those end up as Shutter exclusive. So I think actually I don't know if it went to Prime. Mm. Might have been a Shutter exclusive. Maybe it was just Prime suggested it to me, and that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. You can rent it. Yeah, that might be what I'm thinking of. Well, who directed this movie? Richard Stanley, who also directed <laughs> the Island of Doctor Moreau, which we covered on this show. Did. That's right. Well. Okay, but there was a story there, <laughs> which was famously chronicled in another movie that was called Lost Soul. Yes. Uh, the was like what was the subtitle on that? The making of. Yeah, yeah it's got yeah. a really long subtitle. Mm-hmm. And we covered another one of his movies on this show a long time ago. Hardware. Right. <laughs> there you go. Oh, gotcha. I he yeah. Did hardware. So he is on the wall. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations, I mean, sir. Technically, I don't know if any of his stuff survived the island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> that was, Are you saying none of it? Yeah. Like, it was officially it? directed by John Frankenheimer, so right. I don't know yeah. if they trashed all of uh, Richard Stanley's stuff. Not sure. Um, he also directed... In my heart, he's on the wall. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, he also directed a movie called Dust Devil, then, which I think mm-hmm. is the only one that we haven't done. Um, so th- I think he's only done four feature films. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess you. Can, I don't know if he can count Do- Island of Doctor Moreau because, right, he started it and got fired. And yeah, but I mean, but that's like the most infamous part of his career, right? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. and that's attached to him whether he finished it or not. Now, listen to our episode on that. We yeah. will. We will tell you to uh, watch the making of, which yeah. is way more interesting than the yeah. actual movie. <laughs> and the full title was Lost Soul: The Doom Journey of Richard Stanley's Island of Doctor Moreau. Yes, yeah. watch yeah. that. That's the title. Mm-hmm. That is an interesting launch. 2014. Yeah. Because yeah. everybody's got something to say in that documentary. So because, many people I mean, involved had some shit to talk. can you blame them? That, yeah. The making of that movie was batshit crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and that documentary goes up there with, uh, was it Lost in La Mancha? The mm. Terry Gilliam? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
as like these projects that just went horribly, horribly, yeah. horribly wrong it's for a, everybody involved. It's a great story. <laughs> well, he's a uh, South African filmmaker who is very eccentric and very weird. Um, really? Yeah, he, <laughs> I couldn't well, tell. <laughs> so he attracted certain talent to this movie, who is also very eccentric and very weird. Well, who would have imagined that Nicolas Cage would Nicolas take Cage. a shine to... Okay, so we Nicolas Cage is definitely on the wall, right? Cause, oh, oh yeah. yes. Yeah. Yes, we've watched several. Even if he only done one movie. <laughs> put him up like, there. I feel like he's on the wall, and then Cage Rage is separately on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this one has some Cage Rage. In it, it sure does. does. It yeah. does. Yeah. And I like that it ratchets up to the Cage Rage, though. Yeah, like they really <laughs> tease us with it a little bit, and then a full blown Cage Rage. It's happens fantastic. Later on. Is that the appeal of casting Nicolas Cage in your movie? I would have said yes until I saw Pig. Yeah, I right. was like, this this gave you the level of rage that we expected from Pig. We yeah. you didn't get it, but. God bless Pig. Yeah, it's definitely such a good an movie. Element of having Nick Cage in your movie. Yeah, yeah. It can be, but like you said, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And Nicholas Cage. He has range. <laughs> is he the, is he our like greatest working actor right now? Well, I mean, it de- I mean, it depends on w- what your standards are. Yeah. Yeah. But what he you, can do it all. I, I mean, was going to say, how do you quantify thing, that? Like, what, what is what is the, the greatest working actor? Well, the fact that you can put this movie out and then the next year do Pig. That that versatility. Was he in Joe? Was that him? Yep. Also, mm-hmm. yeah. And I mean, like he's been doing this for like forty years now, so that's why yeah. I'm like. I mean, he used to be in uh, you know uh, major um, Hollywood theatrical movies. He's the um, nephew of Francis Ford Coppola. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, but yeah, he's in like a that weird space. I mean, there's like there's few actors like him. Maybe. Was um like Christopher Walken in his space like in the nineties and yeah. the two thousands. Yeah. I yeah, I think so. all those weird supernatural movies he did in like the yeah. late '90s, absolutely. Walk, yeah, now that you mention it, Walken and Cage, that's a very that's a straight line. Mm-hmm. Like those two are very paralleled. I think they have the same hairline. <laughs> they do have the same hairline. That's true. <laughs> he chooses very odd projects. I mean, maybe yeah. that's a thing. He either has like a really great agent, or it's him. You know, well, he also famously needs money, right? That's yeah. Nicholas Cage's whole thing is he's in so much debt. He has to take whatever job. Right. That was like, him. isn't that like the saying like yeah. Nick Cage takes whatever comes along? Yeah. Because he's he spent his money in the 90s like crazy. Yeah. And now it's all catching up with him. He had tax liens, I think, too. Yeah. And yeah. Several high profile divorces. Mm-hmm. And he's got castles, you know. Yep. Mm-hmm. You yep. I mean, can't he just sell the castles and. Be all right. Well, you, don't wanna, you know you he's don't got wanna. like a big like samurai sword collection too, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Like you could probably sell a pick, lot of shit and pick one hobby, man. Be all right, and save yeah. some money. Well, it seems but like God bless him. But that's <laughs> the thing. Nicholas Cage is like a Renaissance man. Mm-hmm. I once read a story, and this would actually run parallel. And like I'm sure him, him and Richard Stanley had a lot to talk about. They yeah. might be like two guys that you know of who have actually gone searching for the Holy Grail. Yes, absolutely wholeheartedly yeah absolutely but see that speaks to me because if i was a multi-millionaire i also would go looking for the holy grail we've we've talked about his burial plot in new orleans on this show right i think so he has the scary like ivory pyramid or whatever right yeah Yeah. he's had on hand for yes a while now and his name's already on it. You can go see it and see where he will yeah. someday be buried. Yeah. That, I, I know a lot. I know that? a lot of people do that, but it creeps me out. Yeah, it creeps like me my out grandparents too. did that. Seems like it's tempting fate, what, right? Got it before? Or yes. It yeah. Like yeah. No. No. They got it before. So like, my grandpa's already passed. My grandma has is still alive, but like when she if she goes to visit him, like her name is right there. Yeah. Oh, I, her name's already on. Yeah. Oh, wow. That I that I can't do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. That would. Yeah. It, that, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it feels it like you're tempting fate. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. No thanks. And also looking into the future at the same time. Yeah. yeah. It's like you get to walk on the spot where you're going to, because you don't know. You right? get to you see your name engraved on the headstone yeah. already, and they just have a date with a dash waiting to fill in the rest. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fucked man. up. We should What's all she, be doing that. If she remarried and she still <laughs> don't have one. Right. Oh, no. right. Take a new one for the other husband to <laughs> sit right that's next That's a great question because my grandma is remarried. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, so you have some questions to ask your grandma. Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any space for Bill. <laughs> oh, sorry, Bill. <laughs> no, Bill's we could do a stacking thing. Yeah. Don't be, don't feel sorry for Bill. He's okay. an asshole. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Um, but he also seems to be like a uh, like he's aware of he's his, aware because um, he's going to be himself in a movie coming out soon, which is about like the phenomena of, of Nick, being Cage. Nick Cage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, this is meta. This guy was <laughs> yeah. like. Nominated for an Did he win? He won yeah, an Oscar. He's an Oscar, Oscar winner. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. All right. And he's been doing like a lot of just off center movies that have uh, kind of uh, in uh, endured here. His uh, um, popularity is endured with the horror community. Yes. Because he's been in movies like Mandy and Pay the Ghost and stuff like that. Vampire's Kiss. Vampire's going back. And now he's going to be Dracula <laughs> uh -huh. and Renfield. And, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, yes. Okay, so the other person that we're talking about in this is H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, because mm -hmm. I think right there on, the, on the poster it says this is H.P. Lovecraft's Color Out of Space. Mm -hmm. um, we've covered H.P. Lovecraft stories before, and I believe that um, Lovecraft wrote this one right after he wrote the um, case of Charles Dexter Ward, which we did twice on this show, didn't yep. we? Did yeah. We do yes. Haunted Palace and The Resurrected. Um, no. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, uh, and, oh, this story also has been done, um, theatrically in America twice before. As anybody seen Die Monster Die with Boris Karloff? No. The 50s. No. I don't think so. It's okay. a cool title, though. Yeah. And then the other one was The Curse with Will Wheaton. Oh, God, that's Todd no. Atkins from Bad. 1987. Oh, yeah. Then there's like The Curse 2, They Bite, and The Curse 3. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's bite. what The Curse is? The cur but the first one okay. is The Color Out of Space. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Very and then it was done, I think, once in Germany and once in, I was going to say France, but I don't think that's true. Have you read the story? I was going to say. Have I have not. Oh. Yeah. I was curious. I know it has a U in it, so it's the Kalur. The Kalur? <laughs> the, oh, uh, yes. the, the British spelling. The British spelling is color. <laughs> but see, that wouldn't look good in the titling right, right here. There's one extra letter. and Yeah. Uh, Lovecraft was famously an Anglophile and thought that the British way of spelling should have been adopted by... I mean, I'm with him. I'm also an Anglophile. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And, uh, oh, well, that's the thing, too. I mean, we've basically seen something like this in um, Creepshow, right? Obviously, Stephen King mm -hmm. um, basically paraphrased this story in The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Have you seen that movie Annihilation? Yes. Uh, yeah. Natalie yep. Portman, do you have any mm -hmm. kind of flashbacks while you were watching this yeah. movie to that yeah. one? Um, I mean, because that has like a similar idea you yep. know, behind it, mm -hmm. um, which is basically a meteor falls to Earth and starts poisoning the land around it. There you go. Bam. That's the, the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it poisoning, Colin? Is, is it? It's just growing. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's poisoning. Flowers are sprouting up. Things are changing. Drawing? Did you think that the flowers were going to uh, like come alive and start attacking people? I, did. I wondered. When I first went, <laughs> you know, I, I wondered. mean, at this, point, you never know. Yeah. When I saw uh, a praying mantis come out of an egg and hang around the well, I thought anything's possible. I think sure. that's the Big thing about this movie. Mantis. It's just like a buffet of horror elements, like. You got a little bit of body horror here. You got a little bit of cosmic horror here. You got like different types of body horror, animal horror. It's just yeah. like whatever kind of horror you want, you'll get a little scene of it in this movie. I yeah, think. Cause you get like, a, there's a couple echoes of like the shining or the Amityville horror and with a little thing. bit of home invasion sense too. Well, the, the breakdown of the family dynamic, yep. whatever dad goes crazy, but everybody mm -hmm. goes crazy in this um, family annihilation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I remember when this, when, I'm, uh, when this was like on Amazon and it was like being suggested to me, I, I, I remember not watching it because I had just watched. Um, oh shit! What was Mandy? it called? No, um, another was it crazy not, type movie. Oh, what was it? Um, oh, The Vast of Night. Uh, I had just watched The Vast of Night, and they and just like the vibe of it, they looked very similar. So I like kind of had to pick one. I was like, which one do I want to check out? And I felt like I needed a break between them. And I just never got back to this one. So wait, was but they this are a, very different movies. They're very different. <laughs> very but, different yeah, movies. The Vast of Night, The Color Out of Space. Yeah. Is this a first time watch for you guys? Tonight? First time, first time, time for me. No, I watched yeah. it. I watched it the year it came out. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. It's been on the list, but first time um, tonight. Okay. So the, um, I mean, is it, you were saying it has a buffet of mm -hmm. horror stuff. Is it scary? Yeah, oh, yeah, I think it is. I there mean, are parts that are pretty terrifying. It's got like psychological horror, you know. It's like, and you don't. There's no really established rules for what's happening, and you don't ever get any rules or explanation really. And so the way this thing manifests to torture these people is like every possible thing it could think of. You know, it's like the things you would think characters should do to get out of the situation. This color has found a way to prevent that from happening. 
whether it's, you know, disabling the phones, disabling the car. I think the power was even cut to the house yep. at one point. Yeah. yeah. You know, just making them go crazy, making to the, the shining aspect of where they can't stand each other are all just a second away from killing each other. Just tiny little mood swings. Yep. <laughs> and it's like subtly bringing out, like you said, like the worst fears of each of them individually. It's very. Mm-hmm. Right. Because Nick Cage is turning into his dad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to. Right. Because mm-hmm. um, he starts using a voice. Like it's, it was weird. I was like, what in the hell is he doing? Well, yeah, because you know, he's affecting like this accent, but I think that is that's him. It's, it's him doing his it dad is because he does, was, the, he does the impression of, earlier right. in the movie where he does like the impression of his dad, and right. that's how you know. Back, yeah. yeah, very New York. It felt very New York. I don't know. He, whatever impression he was doing, it felt like I knew the person. Like it almost felt really familiar. I'm like I can almost peg it down mm-hmm. to who he's yeah. doing the impersonation of. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. I like that <laughs> this color though, and the way it kind of fucks with them kind of starts off just like small and petty and then escalates it over time. It's like gaslights the fuck out of them basically. Yeah. But it, cause it starts off just being like, Oh yeah, it was like kind of like an earthquake and you know, the alpacas keep getting out of the barn. Wait. Not, that's annoying. Mm-hmm. What? Alpacas? Yeah. Alpacas. Alpacas. What? alpacas. You say, what yeah. are you talking about? The alpacas are a very big part of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's an alpaca farmer, but they have four. Like, is that yeah. enough for a farm? I like, want to know, like, I didn't actually look this up, but I want to know, like, was this, like, in the script, like, this is a Richard Stanley thing, or is this, like, a Nicolas Cage thing? Like, you know what I he should they be? both went. He should be an yes. alpaca farmer. <laughs> and everybody goes, what? Huh, what? Nicolas Cage says, because it's the animal of the future, like we talked mm-hmm. about. He has a thing with his family, because they're like, why do we buy these expensive animals? Yeah. You don't eat them? And he's mm-hmm. like, but wait. He will. He milks the alpacas. Yeah, uh, he does. Nick Cage he describes drink. milking the alpacas. Mm-hmm. It's very funny because this family clearly doesn't really understand the like what an alpaca is for, but they tend to them like you would like cows or chickens or whatever. But nobody really knows like why they're there. Mm-hmm. They're just like. Well, this is clearly like a hobby farm, right? Well, it was his dad's it was farm. His dad's farm. Yeah, but like so she's, I'm wondering if the alpacas she's, came with the wife. Jolie Richardson still has a job. She does. Right. Uh, a she has like a corporate broker. job. Yeah. So yeah. like, so, yeah. I, I don't know. It feels like he's trying to find his niche, and he thought it was going to be alpacas. Yeah. But this farm's not bringing in money. Yeah, I wonder what he did. I, maybe I missed it. What he did like before the movie started, because it did sound like this was kind of like, you know, he ditched all that behind. They used yeah, to be the in the city. city. Right. Yeah. They ditched all that to move out here to this farm, which is dad's farm. Yep. And mm-hmm. it sounded like they bought the alpacas. Like he oh, got the idea yeah. like yeah. alpacas. <laughs> that's what we should do. It was very much. That's what I said. It's like trying to find his niche. Like, OK, we have this farm, but what? is our farm going to be for like right. what are we farming with? and he's just like alpacas yeah <laughs> no this he is, says something like you know you have no idea how much these cost us or something like that yeah, so uh, yeah true this is just really fucking weird <laughs> i mean like it's endearing yeah. though but yes weird but it adds like a lot of humor to the movie that i'm like okay that's why they did it right because just because it's so fucking odd and they hit on it like as much as they possibly right. can well, at the end of like a dramatic yeah. scene you know Nicholas Cage will be like, I have to go milk the alpacas, yep. you know, or something to just add that, that like, you know, you just react like, what? <laughs> you know, you're going to go to. Yeah, it's great. I really like the sense of humor in this movie. Yeah. So like, this is a documentary about Nick Cage right? <laughs> and his alpaca farm. Because it feels like for some of us, they're just like, I have to go milk the alpaca. Um, yeah. like, That's Nick yeah. Cage. Going to I, out of curiosity, I had to Google how much an alpaca costs. <laughs> um, yes. The cost of most alpacas will fall between three thousand and ten thousand dollars per alpaca. Damn, it's a lot. So, so I understand why he's okay upset. Because we're saying question. a cow is like five hundred bucks or something, right? Am I way I off have, on I this? I have no idea what livestock costs. I like the thread we're going on. I, <laughs> I need to know. I never thought I'd need to know how much a cow costs, but I'd like to know. I mean, also, I mean, a cow's a lot more val- valuable as a livestock animal like than it, an yes, alpaca, so I imagine expensive. it's probably more. But also, what do you use alpacas for? You that shear their wool. wool. Their wool. Is, but is that it? Yeah. Because yeah. they say in the movie. Pretty much. Because yeah. I guess that's the thing. They, you a, shear them and then mm-hmm. they'll regrow It's really it soft. They're yeah. docile and soft. soft. They make great pets and they're good for wool. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen, I haven't seen enough yeah. Instagram profiles where alpacas just live in people's houses. So mm-hmm. Pretty cool. They're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want one now. So that's what they did for this movie. They're like, we just want this family to be adorable. So they're going to raise alpacas yeah and and we're saying that that worked well i mean there's a family dynamic going on at the beginning of this 
um, how would you describe? Uh, I th- it feels very like loving. Yeah, like, I feel like these characters know each other. I feel like they're mm-hmm. a family because they kind of jibe at each other like a family would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it feels like a very close knit thing. Like the, I really like them. Like the opening of this movie, obviously, the nature of the movie, we know that something's going to go down, right? Like there's some shit going to go down. But I was just like, I hate that something bad's going to happen to this family. Because <laughs> right? I, I like them that love much. them. I love yeah. them. Yeah, I like them. They're adorable. They clearly love each other. It's just. Daughter didn't get on your nerves at all. You know what? Not really. No, I she like took the her. angst a little too far. I mean, she was very angsty, <laughs> but like, I like that they, she, I like that she wasn't so overly angsty that she like hated her family. Then I would have hated her. Yeah, but she was like, she still clearly loves her family. Yeah, and I've seen enough angst. I just finished watching a whole season of uh, Cobra Kai, so I've seen a lot <laughs> right? of yeah. angsty teens <laughs> going on, and I was, I was glad for the reprieve in that they weren't so. That they liked each other, they you know they weren't so angsty. It felt like a loving family. It was nice. It so was nice. What are we? Who do we have here? What's the? Who's the family consist of? Nick Cage is the father. Okay. Mm-hmm. Julie Richardson is the mother. Mm-hmm. I don't her her mom characters. is um, Vanessa Redgrave, right? Yeah. And so her sister is Natasha. That, that, that was Liam Neeson's wife. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Madeline Arthur, who is the daughter. Okay, that's so she's Lavinia. The, the, Lavinia, yeah, yes. the witchcraft. She's into uh, like she's a witch. She's yeah. a witch. Yeah, right. as we first meet her, she's out in the middle of the um, you know woods by the river yeah. doing yeah, a ceremony. Casting a spell. She's got a cloak. Yeah, she a rides white a white horse. horse. Yep. A white horse. This is like, <laughs> wow. like what year? Yeah, like, I was gonna say it almost looks like a period <laughs> oh, film. Yeah, that's at first, where going. I love this imagery. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. but I love that before we see her, it pans from. Um, like a sculpture, like some sort of like artifact hanging in the tree that's clearly made of like Barbie legs. Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah. so you know it's modern yeah, yeah, day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and yes. then you pan to her. Yeah, yeah. It's a little spiral Barbie leg yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah, and then what? There's an older stoner brother and then a younger brother. Yeah, that's all you need to know. They exist. They don't have much personalities. The younger, well, the younger brother, he um, if you saw the haunting of haunting Hill House, of Hill House, yeah, yeah. you recognize him. He's a little uh, the little kid. Yeah, um, he was um, young Luke in Haunted right, Hill House. Right, and Adorable the kid. middle child is, um, you said he was on... Uh, he was in the OA. I don't know if anyone has seen that. It was I've on Amazon. It. It's a kind of sci-fi show. That's okay. actually a pretty good show. But he looks like the kid in Jennifer's body. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. He's got a bad haircut. Maybe it's just me. Yeah, not a great haircut. Mm-hmm. All right, so this family is uh, basically doing their thing, <laughs> farming their alpacas. Jolie Richardson is uh, like a, a financier mm-hmm. or something like that, yeah. offers financial advice, something like that. Um, so there's a couple other characters who wander in. <clears throat> um, there's Ward. Mm-hmm. This is so Ward's uh, function in the movie, uh, from, from my perspective, is he's the witness. Right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in, I think the Lovecraft story, he's the guy who's telling the story. Right, right. Okay. I yeah, think yeah. in the story, actually, Ward goes to you know the woods of Arkham, and he meets Ezra. Ezra actually tells him the story because Lovecraft stories are hard to adapt because okay. it's usually like I'm telling you the story of the time I went and I talked to this guy, yep. and he yeah. told me this story. Yeah, you know. So but you we do like, know that he's. <clears throat> we do know it's his perspective because the movie opens with a narration from him. Yeah, mm-hmm. which, which I think is actually words from. I was going to say it's got it's got to be word for word from HP, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah from the story. It's which I, like I it sets the mood. Ate yeah. that shit up. The imagery of like the spooky woods, and then yeah, we were three seconds in this, and Holly's like, "I love it." Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "I'm <laughs> eating this, this shit up." I love the like, woods. The the words like oh god it was just it was gorgeous i well, loved it even when you're saying like the the way that we're introduced to the woods uh the flora fauna and landscapes in this it's a widescreen movie but like there is i mean i don't know if anybody looked up the budget of this but it seems like this movie had the money to actually pull off what it wanted to do i mean yes. last week yes. we were talking about uh prince of darkness which right seemed like it didn't have the budget to do which i was yeah which what i was thinking is uh, you said this had a couple theatrical versions of this before this movie i was like i can't imagine bringing it to life in any other way like th- they brought this to life in mm-hmm. this movie i mean i haven't read the story so i don't know hp lovecraft's intentions of like the My stratosphere of the story is it's but fairly right. close in like plotting and I stuff like, i can't like imagine that. doing okay. this with boris karloff like this was right huge yeah because i watched the trailer for the boris karloff one i haven't actually seen the movie i did see the curse but I mean, I wouldn't recommend that one. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't have the, I guess the thing that this one seems to bring into it is like, 
I, I don't know if you'd have this movie if you didn't already have Stuart Gordon's From Beyond. Oh, yeah. They right, share yeah. a lot right. of Also DNA. very pink movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I think that's like if both From Beyond, which I think uh, 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 Lovecraft wrote after this one, but he's going after something. We're talking about the color out of space, but the color in this actually is the alien. Like he's trying yes. to create an alien that is alien. I think that's why Michaela was saying that it's like, I don't know what this thing is or how that, you know, it's alien to you. Yeah. You know, and they, I like that they never really get an understanding of what it is or what yeah, happened because like that, that seems realistic, human, right? They yeah. Don't yeah. Know yeah. What the fuck. They wouldn't be able to conceive of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it might just be something that like humans are not evolved enough to understand ever, you and know, I think that's why I like it because to me, like that's the most realistic, like alien scenario. I think mm-hmm. that we we're not going to have answers for it. Yeah. Like, that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Like supernatural shit that we can't understand. I was like, we already live that kind of stuff all the time. Like mm-hmm. science that just hasn't progressed that far yet. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's terrifying and relatable and awesome. <laughs> but does the movie, because I think, you know, even as I'm sitting here trying to recount it, it's like the movie does what a lot of these type of films do, which it does have a character kind of um, explain what they think the origins of the creature or you know like what it's actually thinking because this is um a character who's later it's tommy chong mm-hmm. and yeah. his character he plays a, a guy who's squatting on the land an old hippie who's That's living right. on the and he uh is possessed by it at some point and so it's like he's you know from the possessed point of view kind of explaining like you know it it came here to make our yes. world like its world or this world that it came from and then there's a psychic vision, right, that somebody has as they're getting possessed. And we see through that character's eyes and we actually do get to see some kind of like alien world landscape. So mm-hmm. it's like it is, even though it's, you know, uh, its motives may be. I mean, well, I guess that's Unclear. it. That's the that's the screenplay explaining the motive of the alien. Right. right? Just through like a uh, uh, hypothesis you know Mm -hmm. it's like well it could be this i'm like well that's what it is that's that's how you explain these things in your movie and uh the budget was it says six to twelve million there is no hard number (laughs) on the movie and it made about one million at the box that's unfortunate yeah because uh because of covid yeah i mean covid uh, only a one million dollar budget yeah obviously covid uh kind of knocked it (laughs) yeah well i mean that does sound like that's uh more than uh, it seems like the The biggest budget for this story yeah right Uh, so far i would say Mm -hmm. did you know that um they were originally set to do i think because of the success of this one Mm -hmm. they say success you just said it made a million but I guess they were thinking about giving Richard Stanley uh, money to make. He wanted to make a, a, a H.P. Lovecraft um, trilogy. Okay. And the Dunwich Horror, or Dunwich Horror, ah, okay. he wanted to do next. But okay. then uh, he ran afoul of personal and professional issues, which mm-hmm. probably means he's never going <laughs> to make it. never going to get to do. make anything again. Yeah. Um, what? But personal Dunwich d- and professional issues. I did not. Just call. Google it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Just Google yeah, it. We don't I, need to get I, into it. I remember some things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, what was I going to say? Oh, well, that was a. I think uh, I had uh, come across something that he had said that the reason that H.P. Lovecraft was such a big deal to him was his mom was like a tarot card reader or something in South mm-hmm. Africa, right? Like she actually was into all this stuff. And so he has like this background in, in supernatural, in the supernatural. And he remembers as a kid, uh, you know, like, uh, seeing tables move and stuff like that. And like, so he, he completely believes that all this stuff is real. It's interesting when you watch these documentaries, just listening to Richard Stanley talk is fascinating. <laughs> the guy's fascinating to listen to. Um, but I guess as she had um, cancer or something and was dying, uh, he would read her favorite stories to her, which were H.P. Lovecraft. So this is a very personal movie, is what you're saying? I think so, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. It would appear so, especially the way he handled Julie Richardson's character. In I think he well. worked that in there, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. her character, we're, we're, we're told that she has cancer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're not entirely sure. Breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Breast cancer. Oh, it was? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I'm guessing she had a mastectomy. Yeah, yeah. Mastectomy that's what it sounds point. like. Yeah. Okay. Based on her conversation with Nick Cage in this mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then um, that, I was going to say, how does that pay off? But uh, that, that goes in very strange, I thought it strange would ways. When her and the son became 
welded together. I was going to say, we're bearing the lead. There's a lot of crazy shit in this movie we haven't even talked about <laughs> right, yet. Yeah. We're 30 but, minutes yeah. in. I thought because in some strange way when the daughter was asking for... Um, she's casting the spell at the beginning of the movie to for her mother, right? Yeah. yeah. She's asking for the cancer to leave her mother and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yeah. I thought this was the fucked up way of doing it. Like, if she absorbs... The smallest child, like yeah, she'll get like from the him. fly. Yeah, she'll right, get yeah. from him, and she'll like the cancer would be gone. Like that yeah. is the process. She'll get it, but she absorbs her son through her back. <laughs> get that. <way>. Yeah. <laughs> it's which like was, a circus freak show. It was fucking cool. Yeah. Like, when, did you yeah. guys expect that? What did no. you think? Okay, no. what did you think when they both got hit by the bolt from the the meteor? What oh. was going to happen to them? Okay, this is what I did think was going to happen. That they were going to be fused yeah, so together? They were going fu- to be melted somehow together. It's exactly what I thought. Because I don't think I we had think seen the like alpacas No, yet. we hadn't seen them yet. No, yeah. Well, I mean, the movie does take a while to get going. There's the the thing, the meteor lands, and then it, it disappears. And, you know, there's, because uh, what's his name? Ward is mm-hmm. like a hydrologist. He's out, you know, examining the, 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 water. the water. The groundwater and all that, mm-hmm. yeah. And they bring out the official dome. There's like this whole thing. They're going to build a reservoir the here there, yeah. and all this. Mm-hmm. Um, but the thing starts to, um, affect the landscape. And I guess this is where it's going after like plants and stuff like that. There's new plants coming up. Mm -hmm. Everything's turning pink slowly. Like even the plants and stuff Mm -hmm. are turning pink. Nick Cage has gigantic misshapen tomatoes that seem to finally grow once the plant. A month early. Yeah. And peaches. And they're huge. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) this is like when, cause like it has the shining effect where everybody's getting so tense and short and terse with each other because they just I guess can't fucking handle the environment they're in yeah and he just he's <laughs> has these giant misshapen tomatoes at the kitchen sink and he's taking bites out of all of them and spitting it out and then Jolie Richardson comes in and he starts dunking them into the trash can <laughs> it is, it's dunk. <laughs> you think it's just gonna be once or twice no he does it for the entire conversation while they're yeah. talking yeah. it's just continuously dunking yeah 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 because he has that kind of uh the it's that frustration of like I've done everything right and like it, it's all still going to shit <laughs> dude, <Yeah>. relatable. Yeah. <laughs> but like that's how tomatoes are, dude. There's like 40 minutes a year they taste good, you know? Like you spend all summer growing them and then like you pick them too early, yep, they taste like shit. You pick them too late, they taste like shit. They're so Damn. sensitive. But these ones I think are tainted no by the uh, Yeah, they look the like thing. it. Yeah, so none of them they're they're huge, but none of them taste good. Uh we see other weird things. There's a bug um the CGI like grasshopper it's a looking like praying mantis that, that flies com- that comes out of the well. Yeah. That is born out of something in the well mm-hmm. and comes up that the littlest son sees. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, all the characters start behaving strangely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick Cage starts channeling his dad's anger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Jolie Richardson seems to be. She well, feels like an Alzheimer's patient, like slowly getting angrier at shit as it goes yeah, on. Yeah, because she just like the way she she cuts her fingertips off like at not even like the tip like the whole first two knuckles she cuts mm-hmm. off and she just doesn't even like react which mm-hmm. i guess is this is another part of the alien the the alien effect mm-hmm. right yeah. like mm-hmm. yeah and that's what's so, so interesting about this movie is things that you don't expect happen and then the way people react to them is also not what you expect mm-hmm. cuz i guess maybe i wasn't clear on how this was happening because as the meteors coming down and we see like the light show out the window right at, at night mm-hmm. um the older stoner son is like doing something on the computer and apparently it takes over the television screen and he's mm-hmm. sitting there drooling while watching mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. but then minutes later he's fine uh and the impression i got was you know the thing had somehow uh seeped into the groundwater and then we see you know they're drinking water from the well. Mm-hmm. So they're being, they're ingesting this stuff. I'm like, right. okay, I mm-hmm. get it. But it does it's seem also to also. The radiation part of it, it yeah. seems as well. Every he's type of the, horror. Right. <laughs> he's getting the. Nicholas burns. Cage. Nick Cage is getting like the radiation burns on him. But yeah. also it feels like there is something radiating from this thing that is also affecting. He also says it smells. Every, he thinks it smells all the time. Everywhere he goes, it smells, but no one mm-hmm. else smells yeah. anything. It smells for him. It's also messing up all the, like we said earlier, the electricity, the Wi-Fi. This mm-hmm. is why Jolie Richardson is mad. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. All signals. It's messing up all electric signals, so I'm also betting it's messing up the electric signals in every person. Yeah. As well. yeah. It's yeah. like it crossed everybody's wires. Yes. Yeah. But it's yeah. like, can it actually communicate through television? Because it seems like, you know, you were looking at per purple static mm-hmm. but it seems like there's symbols 
within the static. Yeah, this feels like there's mm-hmm. something there. There's shapes. Yeah, it feels so like it can, I'm looking at contact can and like there's texture to this. Take over your computer screen, and you know, obviously, cell phones don't work because they're in proximity to the thing. Um, I also don't think this thing knows how to use our stuff. That's why it would never come through clear on a TV mm-hmm. because we are as alien to it as it is to us. I mean, right? this maybe, is what I feel. Maybe it's like. Uh, like a wounded animal right like this thing crashed to the planet and maybe it's like fucking dying so it's just kind of like you know like a wounded animal will bite you know so maybe it's, this is it lashing out and it's dying breath you know maybe that's what mm-hmm. the explosion at the end is, is it, it's dying maybe mm. see i took that as it was going home but because uh, it seemed like it was uh no, maybe it you know there's this big going tornado like colorful tornado mm-hmm. heading up sky in portal your, yeah right because mm-hmm. i think Wormhole. we also at some point we see uh in you know the, in the vastness of space uh in the vast of night right we yep, see yep, yep. uh <laughs> like there's a there's the color up there yes mm-hmm. that comes down which the, no it didn't even come down it was just like it was like in a you know it looked like a galaxy or something yeah. you know yeah. but i'm like that's where that's it up there but is it like still talking to this here is it is this an invasion force is this like what what's right. going on and then eventually at the yes. end it seems to like explode back up out of the mm-hmm. ground and head back up into into space well, i feel like this is it's um like the meteor is kind of it's mars rover like it's scoping out the area to see if this is where it wants to habitate or like you know what i mean like it's trying it out yeah. it's testing the waters if you will to try and yeah to see we yeah. want to terraform here or can i survive here or something well that's what i'm wondering i'm wondering if it is purposeful or like the thing up in space just like Oops, I dropped something and it landed on Earth. <laughs> yeah. This Which is, is this is a some sort of space being's equivalent of phone falling between the seats. It's like, like oh, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, or like oh, f- they're dropping food somewhere. Yeah, it's yeah. They, yeah, the next thing they dropped in, they're like, oh, that's gonna fuck something up. <laughs> yep. Grab that back up here. And the cosmic universe of it all who knows mm-hmm. yeah. specs colin we're just specs just spe- <laughs> time is also like nebulous in this too because the yeah. older son says like it feels like time is stretched around the right meteor. Yeah. so like yeah. he, he loses time mm-hmm. that's a big thing with him it seemed like they were hinting at that with the al- alpacas too the way yeah. they kept getting out and kept eating like uh-huh. on like a loop almost yeah yeah, because they should have died. Because they just they forget they they just ate and now we're going to just <laughs> eat themselves to death. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that Cause... would happen in like the slither version of this. Movie. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I guess they did explain that, but I never got the feeling of like uh, missed time or anything like that. Although there is like one explicit shot of a clock, which I didn't you know register what time it was. And then there's a shot of it again, and I'm like, okay, time has passed. Yeah, you know, but yeah, and they are the unaware, cleaning up after her mother's fingers. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That was Which fun. gross. Ooh. This movie is gross. It is gross. Gross movie. <laughs> Lots Especially, of gooey, sticky stuff. Yeah, just because it like eventually goes bug nuts crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, the the youngest kid, I guess the so the 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 stoner kid, he just seems to go off and get lost. Um I mean, I don't know what other effect it really seems to be having on him. The younger younger kid Oh, one of part of it is like he has a fascination with with black holes in space. Yes. And I think that's kind of what they were getting at is that this is part of that. Like maybe I don't know if this thing like came from a black hole or if like the the the, the thing at the end is a wormhole. Um but there's there's some sort of connection there with this with the kid and his fascination with the black hole. Um I think that's his fear realized. But he doesn't really start acting weird or exhibiting any kind of strange... No, and I think they spend too much time on him given how he doesn't do anything except sit there and stare out. It's like, I, I okay, after the two times you already showed it to me, I get it. We don't have to keep cutting back to those kids and I don't know. Yeah. You gotta and do something with it. <laughs> Lavinia seems like she's... I mean, it seems like she's relatively unaffected. I mean, there's stuff going on around her, but mm-hmm. she doesn't seem... You Except know, for the going deranged. Well, it's later that's her, on. Well, yeah. But that's like part of her like weird religious like <laughs> ritualism, right? Yeah, but I think that augmented by yeah. the, the you know you know the bizarre behavior that she's exhibiting there and that everybody else is. The little kid, he seems to hear somebody talking to him from the well. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, I think we hear like a whistling or something. Yeah. and it whistles back to him, and so he's convinced that there's people living in the well. And the squatter Ezra, yes, um, is listening to the, uh, the the not a squire, a squatter, the squatter, <laughs> the squatter. Yeah, who's listening to the band? They're under there. 
the aliens, <laughs> man. You know, right? they're down under there. Yeah, as he's talking to Warren, Warren's like, okay, I'm going to go try and find G-Spot. He's just trying to do his the job, cat. man. <laughs> yeah, how'd that 14-year-old boy joke play for you guys? <laughs> Fucking yeah, cat named G-Spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. Uh, I mean, it's... That's why the script kind of uh, facilitates between like being witty and kind of being like some of the stuff that Nick Cage was coming off with and uh, the timing and all that was like, this is pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was scripted or if that was, you know, uh, yeah, just him ad libbing. I think those two are so weird and in sync that they just like, I think they share a common language. (laughs) Maybe. I I think think they they probably don't even need to speak. They just no like they have their own color out of space level communication yeah cage and and stan yeah 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 Yeah. i think there's a yeah i think that drew them both to wanting to do this project Mm -hmm. yeah ward's just trying to do his damn job this poor guy he showed up for the worst day of work ever yeah so this guy (laughs) just goes camping out in the woods somewhere and uh, he's gonna test all the water so he's in his truck and he's just gonna camp out while he Mm -hmm. tests everything yeah Mm -hmm. okay so i guess this is the thing we're talking this movie's like uh, almost two hours long okay Mm -hmm. um and i guess i did think that it felt kind of long because it seems like you know your um your plot is basically the alien lands it starts changing everything and then it accelerates in your third act when everything goes bug nuts crazy. But it takes its time. That second mm-hmm. act like goes on for a while. There's a lot of scenes because you have each character in the family, and there's four of them, right? So we kind of have to deal five, with all that. Five of them. Five of them, sorry. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it then, turns into four. Yeah, I'm, it does turn into four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But in addition to that, you also have Ward and you have Ezra. So yeah. would a cleaner version of this script eliminate those two characters? Like, do you need Ward them? and Ezra? Yeah. Oh, you no, gotta I have like Ward. I think you, you gotta need have Ward, but you could probably do without Ezra. Mm-hmm. You couldn't tell the story just from like so, contained on the uh, the farm itself, and just have Lavina survive, and she comes up with the. You I mean, know, I suppose you her conversations yeah, with the older brother, like basically filling the same mm-hmm. information that Ward and, and like, Ezra it might have. actually make the older brother um, more. Um, Give more to do. Yeah, I think that. I mean, was this when they made this movie? Were they planning already planning to make a trilogy? Is the thought Ward would be the character that would go through? I the think other they two were movies? trying. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that they were. Tra- he was thinking that this would have like a shared universe, and right. Ward would would go on. So it's like I get that, and I get that Ward is also in the story, but mm-hmm. it's like you know. Oh no, I would. I'll, I'll still take him. Like mm-hmm. I don't mind the length of this yeah. movie. Surprisingly, like, I, don't I like that they're in there, and I like that they took their time. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, especially in a day where we're all complaining about movies being yeah. like two hours or long. more. Yeah. yeah. I'm perfectly happy with this being an hour and 50 minutes. Yeah, I didn't notice the length on, no. on this. On this on okay, this well, then it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, the color. That's because time is stretched around it. That's why you didn't notice <laughs> oh, Got it. Got it. Um, the color is, uh, you know, significantly pink, violet, whatever, mm. because, you know, we talked about From Beyond, obviously chose that color before too because i think uh lovecraft always tries to describe it as like a color you can't quite see it's not on the human spectrum Mm -hmm. and so they're just like we're gonna blast you with like violet light like Mm -hmm. like crazy Mm -hmm. um and this violet light with a life of its own starts zapping things there's actually tendrils and stuff that we see coming out of the well at some point and it zaps the alpacas first and so we get a a thing type yes. scene. Yes. Very thing type. Very scene. thing type, yeah. Yeah, I know because I'm like there's nothing else it like could a, be. A, a mm-hmm. reference to the thing, yeah. right? A pile of alpacas even if you're one not, <laughs> blob. Yeah, even if you're not, if you look at that and you look at the thing, it's it's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it would almost be insulting if you're like no, it's not the thing. It's like come on. Yeah, you saw the thing. <laughs> like you just admit it. Just we're admit okay. It to the thing. Like it's we're fine. okay with it. Just mm-hmm. admit it. Which is ironic because the thing does kind of feel like a Lovecraft story. It yeah, does. it does. Yeah. It very much mm-hmm. does. Um, did, well, did you know this is the reoccurring theme of triangles in this movie? It's on her thing. It's in the window. Yeah. yeah. There, I think there was some hanging from the trees, too. Yep. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's they, in the Spectre Vision logo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was close-ups on, like, the, the glass. Oh, was, yeah. like, little prisms. Oh, there was little prisms on that. It's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. There's there's a lot of triangles throughout this movie. I significance? Don't know I don't know. That I was yet. wondering if it's the prism color prism, like, oh maybe. Mm. I don't know. This is where we find out that like a triangle has like a special significance in like uh, Wicca or something. Probably. Like that. Well, I, mean, I think it does because like she it was in her in her book like part of her symbols. Right. Triangles. Yeah. She's um, definitely wearing it in her hair on mm-hmm. purpose because they want to associate it with right. her. 
She mm-hmm. has a copy of the Necronomicon, which of course is it's I, it, the funny thing about it is she also like, has the Book of the Law by Aleister Crowley too. Yeah, well, I mean, mm-hmm. you would, I guess, yeah. if you're practicing. But the the Necronomicon um, obviously was created by Lovecraft. It's not a real book, mm-hmm. but then some guy in like the '80s or something wrote it because I know people who bought that book mm-hmm. and have that exact one. Yeah, you yep. know. But it's weird that it's like this is a book written by it's like fan fiction yeah. like mm-hmm. this is what the book in lovecraft would be yeah and now people think that that's like an actual like magical book uh, mm-hmm. and it shows up at this movie she's got it she uses this when she carves herself up later on i think as a protection spell or something mm-hmm. like that there's a lot of like all the characters seem to want to get off the property right or at Even least the, the kids do yep. yeah uh, but they're they for some reason something happens that always keeps them there. Um, mm-hmm. Dad is trying to take care of uh, Mom, mm-hmm. who after she cuts her fingers off, they go to the hospital, which is like a mile away, and then he brings her back. No, then, he said it's an hour, hour, an hour away. away. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. and then uh, that play that must play into the time thing, right? Maybe because they know? Gone, he says like bring the alpacas in by ten. Yeah, as he leaves at night. And the next morning, you see the kid taking the alpacas, and I'm like, "What? Ten o'clock the next morning?" Mm-hmm. And they don't get back until the la- the the following like evening or late afternoon. Yeah. Um, but there is this incident then that happens after we see the the uh, alpacas. Jolie Richardson and the kid from the Haunting of Hill House are zapped by the the color. Yeah, big energy zap into a malignant situation. Yeah, so it's yeah. A, like they're they're all twisted up and they're fused together. Yeah, yep. but this is one of those things where you're like, man, Jolie Richardson is a trooper because she Ooh, had yeah. to endure some some stuff, and you can't you like drink I from mean, a bowl. That that was one of the grossest scenes in this whole movie. Her <laughs> yeah. being like all half contorted, dr- yeah. like drinking out of a bowl like a dog with her tongue coming out like that. I was like, oh yeah. god, did, don't show me. Just seeing that kid. Just a couple of limbs just kind of hanging out. Yeah. And then it just crying. Yeah, that, that, that was just me. annoying. Yeah, it just that, got that like I understood Cage when he said, "Will you shut?" He said, "Like, will you shut them up or something like that?" I was like, "Yeah, I agree." Level, He's like, also, "Why are they making that noise?" I'm like, "Because they're fused together, Nick Cage." Yeah. Yes, but also just the kid, the sound of a kid in pain. Like, I know that mm-hmm. that got yeah. to me too. Yeah, yeah. It, they they did it well where it bothered me in that way. Yeah, people, for sure. Yeah. Well, I had like a. I mean, I guess you know because you're seeing. Nick Cage's reaction to this, uh, he, when he goes down to see the alpacas and they're all fused together, I think he goes looking for the dog, which is well, you know, disappeared. But he goes down and his son sees it. He and only tells goes him to that, kill him. He, well, yeah, he goes down there with a shotgun and blows these alpacas away. I mean, yeah. the scene is like you know everything it, in the third act of this movie. It cranks everything up to like eleven. In intensity, in performance, the movie seems in this like kind of light and uh, magic show trying to break the screen itself. I don't know how else to describe this. Yeah. It's so distorting the images that you're yeah. seeing. Um, yeah. that it's like, holy fuck. And Those- the music is seems all like uh, dissonant. And- it's like an acid trip. Like This is like, yeah. it is. It, yeah. It's, Good it's visualization. experience. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... Maybe I don't know. That's too on the nose. Say I don't know. It, it's it's more of a feeling at this point in the movie. Instead of sitting there trying to figure it out, it felt like yeah. just experience what is happening because right. they're not going to give you like here's the explanation. They're like Im- they're like we're going to show you. Imagine all of your senses are completely distorted and out of whack. Mm-hmm. We're going to show you what that's probably like. Mm-hmm. And those effects yeah. I like were cool because the way everyone just sort of kind of. Like you said, distorted, and they're blobbing out from themselves. And yeah, the screen, the picture. Yeah. I mean, like everything. Yeah, there's like a shimmer on top of that, but yeah, yeah, they're actually breaking apart. Like they're wait, like at a wavelength level, they're coming apart. Yeah, yeah. We need to talk about when the daughter is locked upstairs with the mom. Uh, yeah. So eventually, that's because yeah. that's like the ultimate, like. Like, cause they, so Jolie Richardson and the kid are fused together and they're locked in the upstairs attic for what reason? Don't really know. And, uh, I mean, I wouldn't want it hanging around the house. <laughs> well, they were, they're allergic to sunlight. But so there was like, more sun in the attic. That window was fucking huge. <laughs> right? yeah, but yeah. put her like in yeah. the sunlight. Yeah. The movie thinks that that's the dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. And, and Nick Cage takes the daughter, uh, Lavinia up and forces her in the closet and says feed your mother and then locks them both in there and the mother and son are a full on spider legged like 
yeah. it Pennywise like yeah. the thing yeah. kind of mashup that just skitters across the floor at ridiculous speeds when like last time we saw them they were just like yeah. a mutated blob yeah so like whatever this alien is doing it's hap- time once again time is either being stretched or condensed or something or mm-hmm. it's fucking wild the transformation they made yeah, yeah. it's taking place yes mm-hmm. yeah it's kind of we only i think we only see it skitter in that one but then there's like all these close-ups of you know it's gross of her like uh you know doing her like, face is and she gonna yeah. eat the daughter mm-hmm. yeah. you know or whatever nick cage has like he had that moment after the alpacas i guess you know like because his mind is distorted, you know, by the uh, the color, but he's also like, you know, I got to put the alpacas out of their misery. Yeah, I spent a bunch of money on them, but like, I got to kill these things. This is unnatural and weird. Yeah, they're not alpacas anymore, and they're in pain. And so then he comes Can't upstairs and he's <laughs> no. going to shoot his wife, you know, right, with the double barrel shotgun. But I don't think he, that he can. And mm-hmm. then he leaves. And after goes kissing her back downstairs, times. and then doesn't he lock the daughter up yeah. after that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when he says feed your mother, was he trying to be like, my, I know she's going to eat you, so That's let me lock I you in there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Maybe just be stuck on a loop like feed the alpacas. Yeah. I want to see mother. how much farther she would have evolved if it kept going. Mm hmm. She had been like a the, kaiju in like an the hour. Kid coming out of her back, yeah. Another head. Would all of the family ended up like one uh, thing at some point? Uh, right. Yeah. Well, the together. perspective, I guess, changes once Ward and uh, the sheriff arrive. Yeah. Right. Um. Because we find out that Tommy Chong, he's gone like dead, but he's left a creepy voice recording. And- this is really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like this. I, I like too. the effect they put on his voice for the recording. I like it's coming off of that as he sits there. Mm-hmm. Kind of a shell, but obviously. But like kind of possessed also possessed too. Possessed of yeah. the thing. Yeah, the glowing thing yeah. breaks out of his head. I liked head. it. Trees mm-hmm. are grabbing people and like mm-hmm. eating them. Yeah. It's crushing yeah. them to death. Oh, yeah, that sheriff just gets snatched running yeah. away, like yeeted up into the air yeah. by that tree. It was great. Yeah, and then uh, Lavinia, like, becomes kind of like, it. the image we have is like she's summoning it or something. You know, she's got the third eye glowing out of her glowing eyes. And yeah, which matches a symbol on when we do get imagery from the thing. The It almost matches the symbol on her head. Yeah. Whatever. The, it explores it's like the, the ge- geography or something yeah. the topography of the planet the weird mm-hmm. fucking alien yeah. planet that we see mm-hmm. um but uh nick cage actually does um kill the 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 wife yeah mm-hmm. and the son which you know it's like those scenes are always kind of like you know i mean that's the the emotional crux of that character right yep. yeah mm-hmm. it's like he had to go and actually you know euthanizes yep. his, right. his wife and son his even because wife and son yeah but he, it's like he, he had you know uh like a psychotic break or whatever he's like that's mm-hmm. not my family you yeah. know whatever mm-hmm. so he, it's like he spared himself from the grief of the reality of like right. the horror of that moment mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. disassociating yeah but then he gets shot and killed i'm like what they shot and killed nicholas cage uh before the climax of the movie I but think we're at the back. climax. I was like, I think this it's is mid climax. Yeah. yeah. Mid climax. Yeah. yeah. But then mm-hmm. he shows back up again. And that was, I was not entirely sure what was happening because then it, the pers- perspective shifts to Ward. Yes. Mm-hmm. Going into the house is like the yard is exploding and, you know, craziness. Lavina mm-hmm. dissolves mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> in this big vortex yeah. of, uh, of uh, you know, the twister of the color. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's going on in that house? I guess like what was happening? Uh, Ward goes in and the entire family shows up there obviously mm-hmm. it's not them right no. it is some kind of they officially have become part of the thing at this yeah point, i think the family has mm-hmm. so these are just representations mm-hmm. there it's still it feels like the thing itself is in chaos mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. whole time. it's dying it's right? either dying yeah. or going back up yeah. something is happening to it mm-hmm. so chaos is ensuing at this point something is bigger is about to happen yeah and well, it, i yeah i i feel like because i mean when it's when it's like the blob of alpacas, he goes and he shoots each one, like the whole blob. And then he shoots the wife and child fused together. So I think he is killing it. I think mm-hmm. Michaela's right. I think it's dying. It's it's It came to Earth to see if it would thrive here. He's killing it. And then this is mm-hmm. this is it not survive. I don't know if it fully dies here or if it does go back up, it but retreats. it is dying. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this is like... Um then we're saying that it's a hive mind, right? Or something mm-hmm. like that. And if you kill one of the branches on it, 
you know, you're you're injuring the central thing right, that right. lives in yeah. the well or whatever, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. there is more to it than what is apparently just on that box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that the writers anticipated how the audience feels about different animals. Like they, like Sam, the dog, we see run off screen and like you hear sounds that imply he's dead, but you never see him again. You don't see the dog die. The horse comet just literally gets to run away. But the, they were the like, how does, cat. well, the cat, yep. The cat does, uh, I mean, you don't see it happen, but you see the mutated cat yeah. and you see yeah. the collar and the blob monster, mm -hmm. but they were like, we don't know how the audience fucking feels about alpacas. So I guess like put them in a blob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we know people don't want to see dogs die. Probably not horses either. Well, so this is but, the testing yeah. ground for like, how do they feel about alpacas? Yeah. I can confirm. I love alpacas. And that was, <laughs> that was heartbreaking. <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's definitely effective there at the end. Everything mm -hmm. builds to this big sonic and uh, visual, like, cacophony of, mm -hmm. uh, you know. An assault on the senses, yeah. all of them at once. Because it even seems like Ward is, like, uh, experiencing it because he's, it mm -hmm. seems like he's got his ears covered and he's hunkering down somewhere as this thing, like, cellar. explodes out. Oh, that's right, because he got mm -hmm. down to oh, go yeah. down in that's the wine cellar. That's why he cellar. survived, I Because I was like, why do we have this set of the wine cellar that we only see mm -hmm. once when mm -hmm. Nick Cage goes down there to pick out like a certain vintage, but it's so we can have this end scene. Yeah. And like it becomes all a bomb the, shelter for him. Yeah. yeah. But all the wine bottles explode. So mm -hmm. there is like a kind of this massive energy release or something mm -hmm. as this thing goes off. And then it like makes the entire area ash. It's like the predator. Mm -hmm. It's like the bomb at the end of predator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. And it's like, and Ward is Arnold sure. Schwarzenegger. Okay. Yeah. All right. But in the dust and everything uh -huh. in the aftermath. Yeah. yeah in the scene. There's no more color. I was going to say it's yeah, they, the color is yes. completely gone. Yeah. It was specifically like black and white. I was looking at yeah. that. I'm like, are they going to bleed the color back in? And they did a little bit like when he, cause I'm like, okay, he's got a little bit of skin tone and I can see right, and little like blue. his, yeah, his jacket, yeah. like a little bit, but it's super desaturated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's this satellite or drone level pullback of the like ground zero where this thing went off and it's miles and miles of scorched earth. Mm -hmm. and just, mm -hmm. you know, um, don't, is it the alpaca blob that they're talking about when they say that there's like birds and like a deer and stuff caught up in it? a new one. A no, new, that was a, that was a one, new blob, yeah. a new animal blob. Yeah, this is, I, I think, I'm, I'm sure the dog is part of it. Yeah. Oh, definitely, probably. The, definitely G spot. The, is yep, definitely yeah. Part yeah. Of it. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, because he said that they animals. found it by like Ezra's. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is like the townspeople are becoming aware of it. I guess like mm -hmm. we do see the town and, you know, the sheriff and the other guy and, and Ward, you know, like, OK, this is an ecological disaster. I mean, that does seem to be like a a big part of this movie. I don't know if we're addressing that enough, but the, like the focus on like nature photography um mm -hmm. water studies yeah <laughs> yeah uh the ant you know like frogs and insects and all that stuff we see a lot of this i mean mm -hmm. like the landscapes are you know shot in a way to like okay we're definitely emphasizing like the you know the clouds and the sky and mm -hmm. sunsets and you know yeah. sunrises and all that stuff so uh and the idea that um they're gonna flood this valley to make this reservoir i think this is the mm -hmm. climate at the end of the movie the the coda on the movie is ward being like they're gonna flood it mm -hmm. basically to to erase that this ever happened but mm -hmm. i'll never drink that water you know mm -hmm. right. the idea that if this stuff is still down there it's never. gonna mm -hmm. you know yeah. keep uh but they do comment at one point that this particular water is what is for like most of the eastern seaboard yep there, there's like that scene in the sheriff's office or something where yeah, you can hear the, the, mayor. the mayor talking yeah. and uh, yeah yep right. And she's mm -hmm. like, this is for most of the Eastern Coast. For yeah. most right. of the East Coast. Oh, yeah, because they're yeah. talking about the infrastructure yep. and how we're, a new uh, water yeah. Yeah. reclamation mm -hmm. thing is coming in here. And all infrastructure that drama. Yeah. yeah. I know, because I'm not entirely sure what like the message is on this. Other than, you know, there's an interest in, you know, like, uh, you know. I'm not going to look for one. Yeah. I'm sure there's some well, Flint water crisis connections here. But they're not blaming, you know, it's like, oh, it's a thing from space or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Yeah, but the, but like... They paint that mayor character as kind of a piece of shit. And yeah. so I feel like they're implying that she's going to cover up whatever happens because well, that, yeah, it's her job to cover yeah. it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And then he gives a little, uh, a little more from the story, I'm assuming. Ward does at the end of this movie in voiceover as he stares yeah, from, at the mm -hmm. 
flood. And the, the little weird bug flies, up, flies by. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. So there's you didn't contain it, and the yeah. apocalypse has happened, and you just delayed... You know, mm-hmm. it's still coming for you. Mm-hmm. It's basically, the uh, yep. that's cosmic yeah. horror. That's how you yeah. do it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Love some <laughs> cosmic horror. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not, uh, what we personally individually thought of this movie and whether we'd recommend it to you. But before we do that, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to need the assistance of our mailman, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He looks like the blob of a few different animals. Yeah, he's definitely a combination. <laughs> yep. We'll figure out what later. After he's he dies, like, we'll dissect him. Today he's looking a little purplish, <laughs> pinkish. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got a glow about him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we should probably uh, let the good folks at home know, know how they can participate in this interactive portion of our program by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. They can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show about tonight's movie, The Color Out of Space. Adam Kaler writes in and says, have we learned nothing from Jordy Verrill? Stay away from meteors. This is a very colorful movie, which Richard Stanley uses to mask some truly horrifying experience. My heart sank during the scenes in the attic with Teresa and Jack. Great pick. I yeah. wish that Nick Cage would have touched it and said meteor shit. Meteor shit. <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. Uh, Novato Judoka says the damn alpacas or <laughs> llamas or whatever they were. The movie is worth firing up the projector to fill the room with that unique lava lamp like glow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Scraw 793 says I've only seen this once, but I recall thinking that Nick Cage seemed to be using his vampire's kiss voice in certain scenes. Do you think Nick Cage automatically says, yes, I'll do your movie when he answers the phone? He, he <laughs> the tax man says he has to. So <laughs> isn't he like a lord somewhere? Nick Cage, a Scotch lord. He, yeah, he just spends it. So is my dad. Calm it, down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Grant Parrish says this was wild. I watched it while I was high. Do you know how much of a fever dream this is for the stoned mind? I can't be wondering why they're talking about Alexandrian Wicca without talking about Gardner- Gardnerian. I am not in the school in uh, Wicca, apparently. Mm-hmm. Gardnerian. Like if someone was a Pepsi person but had never heard of Coke. And if the freak show is wondering why this tangent happened, the fucking color lingers, dudes and dudes. It, it lingers. It lingers, man. I feel like we've all been touched by the Color's color. fucking hair. Yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, this movie's an interesting one. This is a movie I bought blindly after a friend said, dude, Nick Cage, Lovecraft. I was not high when I watched it and loved it. Enough <laughs> said. I bought it on my iPhone then and there, and yeah, it's an interesting ride, and I hope you freakers like it too. We'll get to it. Yes. Right? <laughs> uh, Amber Kelsall says, watching this movie was like experiencing the most gorgeous dream morph into a worst nightmare scenario, while the dream landscape just becomes more and more colorfully memorizing and distorted as it tries to make your brain implode. So in short, That's I it. loved it. There you yeah, go. Accurate. Yep. accurate, yeah. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says it's visually stunning and able to capture the feel of Lovecraft's story, which kind of seems to be hard to convey. Wish the ending had been on a larger scale, but well executed. Shame about Stanley. Would like to have seen his proposed Lovecraft Universe trilogy to have been realized. For sure. Uh, last week we watched the movie called Prince of Darkness. Brian Scott said it's a great movie. I'm sure it's weird, but I'm glad y'all didn't hate it totally. Great episode as always. Keep up the podcast. Five stars for me on Apple Podcasts. Ooh, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for listening. Very much. Uh, Stephen Hayes says uh, Prince of Darkness is one of Carpenter's best and very underrated. Uh, Stratos Salamanis says such a brilliant director that deserves much more recognition. Uh, Simon Carter says one of my favorite parts of your show is things you would only hear on the Saturday Night Free <laughs> Show. <laughs> Example. There were a lot of money shots in this movie. <laughs> That's <And> Holly. <laughs> it, it what rem- can I say? <laughs> <laughs> and it reminded me of when Rawhead Rex pissed on that. Priest. That's Michaela. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Uh, uh, I would love our best out of context. <laughs> right? We usually mention yeah. them on the podcast as well, they happening. That, but that makes that movie sound unfairly exciting, too. It's like that's a misleading <laughs> thing to reference in that movie. Mm-hmm. We encourage you to go back and listen to our Prince of Darkness episode. Indeed. Uh, the week before that, we watched Phantasm 2. About that, uh-huh. Andrew Bradford write in, wrote in and said, I've seen this movie dozens of times, and I never knew... Oh, man, it was Alchemy. I never Alchemy. knew Alchemy's <laughs> character name. As for the movie, the best one of the series, it's certainly a horror slash action movie with, for the time, pretty good special effects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the best Cuisinart uh, kill scene is where the mortician gets it in the back with the ball sticking out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Not sure how, how it got stuck in his mouth as it had no problem traveling up through his torso, but ah, the movie <laughs> needed a good shot to end that scene. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Wick27 says, I saw this scene... This is the one where uh, Alchemy was pulling out her hair. Yep. And uh, what, uh, it says, when I was very young on cable in the early 90s, and it haunted me how her hair pulls out so easily. Yes. Yep. And Action Dude writes <laughs> in and says, great episode. I can't say I'm a huge fan of the Phantasm franchise, but your podcast is informative and funny. Well, thank, thank you, you. Action Dude. That's so nice. Thank like, you, Action Dude. Oh, I like thank your you, name. Action Dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, great name. All right, so those are the three. The three. Or the, so this makes the third movie that. This is uh, the third. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we've covered number two. Right. This was number two. Now we're going to go mm-hmm. around the table and tell you what we thought of it and whether you should watch it. Starting with Sean. <laughs> what did you think of Color Out of Space? Well, Sean, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Over to you, Sean. <laughs> Over to you, Sean. We'll be back in five. Um, I. This, I love the experience of this movie. I feel this feels like we've lot, seen a lot of H.P. Lovecraft stuff. This feels like, and I'm not an expert in any way on H.P. Lovecraft, but this feels like a uh, a kind of a pure version of one of his stories in a way that is not. It feels like you have to experience his stuff, and it doesn't necessarily need to be narratively um, like straight on. Um, I like the visuals of this movie. I like the actors in this movie. Uh, the family dynamic at the beginning, I think, uh, like we said, was uh, pretty great. So I'm interested in these characters as they go through this experience, which is horrific in many ways. Um, I didn't feel the length of this movie at all. Um, I really liked a lot of this movie. Ah, the visuals. It's very good. Um, I like this movie an awful lot. I would like to watch it again. Maybe I'll do it high. Who knows? Because I think that would be a fucking hell of an experience. But I think that's what this movie is, is it's an experience. I don't think you can don't get bogged down in like plot details. But I also think all those work pretty well, too. Like I'm I was with this movie. Um, I didn't feel pulled out of it. I made a comment with like, I believe the reality of this movie more than some recent horror movies that have come out, <laughs> um, which I mean is saying something, but uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I was kind of surprised again, two hour long movie. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to recommend it. Um, yeah, what a, it's a visual feast. It's something you really should experience. So I'm going to recommend color out of space. Come on. I think I'm going to recommend it too. I was actually going back and forth on this. Um, there's a lot that I like about it. Uh, Nicholas Cage obviously is a, it's just an interesting actor to watch, yes. no matter what he. Well, whose Blu-ray is this? This is mine. <laughs> so you owned it, but you weren't sure if you were going to it. it. Just yeah. checking. <laughs> it's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> so we had to see it. I think that was one of those where, like, I'm like, eh, if I'm going to you know, rent it, may as well just buy it. Sure. Um. I like H.P. Lovecraft. I suppose that was the other thing. So it's like, well, I got to check out this new H.P. Lovecraft uh, uh, movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it does capture, and not all Lovecraft stories are obviously about like cosmic horror and right. all that stuff, but this one kind of does give you that feel. More yeah. than any of the other ones that I've seen, maybe. I mean, like full on like cosmic horror. The, like you are small in the face yes. of this like gigantic thing. I felt that. Um, I did. It, the irony is like when I when I mentioned uh, Annihilation earlier, it's like that is kind of like very similar. This mm-hmm. thing crashes and it spreads, and there's an area that if you you know it's investigators, yeah, I guess this going ecological into, change. Yeah, to a, yeah, yeah. A very I think I like degree. that one better than this one, um, but it has the you know again it, the canvas is bigger and the the True. budget's 
bigger. Um, I think the problem that I have with this, it just feels like to me, it feels like there's too many characters. I think the movie is trying to uh, spend time with each one of them, you know, to its credit, but it just kind of feels like, all right, we're going down into the kitchen again, or we're so he's sitting in the living room watching TV or like taking time out from the horrible thing that just happened. And so it's like, it feels like you could somehow in the writing stage, like combine some of these and, you know, get a little bit more forward momentum on it. So maybe that is why I wouldn't be like, you know, this movie's fucking fantastic and you have to see it. But, um, <clears throat> I think the experience of it is, yeah, it's, a. Uh, you don't need an acid trip when you watch this movie. Yeah. It's like, it's trying to give you the cinematic equivalent of a psychedelic experience. Um, this might be one of the closest I've seen <laughs> that comes to that. Um, so it felt like it. Yeah. I'm sure that Richard Stanley knows a lot about that subject. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I guess I would recommend it both as a, uh, a, you know, like first rate adaptation of a Lovecraft story or, you know, conveying his uh, sense of cosmic horror, uh, worth seeing if you're a Nicolas Cage fan. I think this is a good performance. It may not be great, but you do get some uh, Cage rage. And I do like, you know, that he, I do, I do like the, the, the change that his character goes on. And I mm-hmm. suppose that's why he signs on to these things. Yeah. It's like, well, this is going to mm-hmm. give me something to do. Right. You know? Um, yeah. Okay. I'm going to say, I recommend <laughs> color out of space. Holly, what'd you think? Um, yeah, Sean, you had a, you had a good comment. You said it's a visual feast and that's a great explanation. Um, Colin, you are also correct. This is probably the closest to an acid trip that you can see in a, in a movie. Um, yeah, I, I was completely engaged with this movie the entire time. I didn't feel the two hours. I thought it was pretty remarkable. I mean, I, I I agree with you about like the characters that they spend a lot of time with, with some that don't really have a payoff. Um, but I, think I didn't. The one kid falls down the well and is like never seen right, again yeah. or something. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. There's, there's some, there's <laughs> some does. holes there, but at the same time, like it didn't pull me out of the movie. It was, it was enough that I was still completely into the story. I was mesmerized, completely mesmerized by this movie. Um, yeah. I, I was just, I was thinking like, can you imagine if we could time travel going back and showing this to HP Lovecraft? <laughs> Like, can you imagine? Right. Oh my God. <laughs> that would be remarkable. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, it was, it's something else. It's a trip. It's, you definitely get cage rage. It's, it's horrifying. It, there's, there's really some terrifying, Michaela, you said it earlier, there's some terrifying things like on every level, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's emotional horror, there's psychological horror, there's physical horror. Like there's, there is a lot going on here and it, it, it is, it's very effective in every aspect. Um, yeah, I'm going to recommend this. This, this was a, this was one of those movies that like, we were all quiet for a long time watching this movie. <laughs> right. I, there were parts where I'm just like, I could make a joke about this, but I'm enjoying this movie. Right. Yeah. So I'm just going to go like, with it. There, you can tell when we're down here, you can tell when we're quiet because we're bored. And then you can tell when we're quiet because we're like mesmerized. Mm-hmm. And we were definitely mesmerized tonight. So like, I, yeah, I was like, yeah. I want to break it up. Right. Keep going. Like we made some jokes at the beginning, but then once we got into it, we were just like silent because we were just in it. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think this is a really amazing experience. For, as far as movies go um yeah i think you're gonna like it i really think you're gonna like it so i definitely recommend it good choice to our listeners yeah good choice i appreciate you picking a what mo- a great year I, yeah I yay pick- we haven't heard the last one yet don't uh, I know, that's true it could, could all get Cooking derailed the system. i was a little nervous um about the animal death but mm-hmm. it's it's tolerable in this i promise it's mm-hmm. not that bad so there you and, go yeah and your cat found his brother my cat yeah yeah <laughs> The cat in this movie, G Spot, looks exactly like my cat. So <laughs> basically, named the same thing. Basically, because the the cat actor his name is Lucifer, and my cat's name is Beals. So brothers, mm-hmm. love it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I so recommend an extra star. <laughs> yeah, extra star, even though it died, but we didn't see it die, so it's okay. Uh, Michaela, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I watched this in 2020 when it came out as part of like when we do our end of the year episode. This is one of my research movies, and I went back and forth for a while about whether or not I was gonna it was gonna make my list that year, but it ultimately didn't just because. For me, as much as I loved this movie when I first saw it, the one problem I have with it is that they don't even know what they're fighting or what they're up against or even really what's happening to them. They have no understanding of any of it. So when you 
know that, you know that they're inevitably all going to die. So like you're just working to that point, you know, it's like it's kind of frustrating sometimes when an ending is so obviously telegraphed like that. It's like there's no way they're going to beat this thing. They're just all going to die at some point. So that when you know that it can feel like it drags a little bit because you're like, okay, I like especially like with uh, Lavinia. All right. I was How say, long are you going to take to dissolve, lady? Like she I was, was going to say, I was hoping for a little more payoff with Lavinia because she kept like asking for protection for herself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I thought there was going to be more payoff for that. Mm hmm. No, but no. Yeah, anyway. that's the thing. There's nothing they can do to beat yeah. this thing, which yeah. like is realistic, but not always the most interesting story to watch. So that yeah. ultimately was like the thing I dinged it for. that kept it off my list. But I still think it's like pretty flawless movie otherwise. Um, and I've been looking back on my notes I wrote when I first watched it and I said it was like Evil Dead meets Annihilation meets The Blob from 1988. Mm. Um and I think that, like, it's a shame nobody saw it. It's a shame COVID have impacted it the way it did. But I think that in 20 years, this is going to be like a cult classic movie. Absolutely. If it if it's not already starting to go that way. It's like, because this just doesn't sound like a movie we would make nowadays. So the fact that it, it did get made and, like, Nicolas Cage and Jolie Richardson were in it, you know, mm-hmm. like, we should be celebrating this movie. So I definitely recommend it. You have to see it. It's a shame nobody did see it because mm-hmm. there's so many reasons to see it. So definitely recommend I think it got out there just because, you know, like mm-hmm. people are uh, asking us to review it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And I know it was like, if you're a, if you're a subscriber of Shudder, like they have these movies that they must acquire and then they feature as like, you know, the Shudder original or whatever. And yeah. I remember that one was like for a yeah. couple months. It was like that. color right. out of space. Mm-hmm. I uh, definitely understand why Amazon was recommending this after I watched The Best of Night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Definitely not understand now. Uh, the stoner kid is so inconsequential. He did not make. The cover of the movie. Oh wow! <laughs> All the other ones wow. did. He did not. Is the well in there? The well is there, so maybe he's in there. Maybe he's and that's in the well. <laughs> so, this is probably the part where he got blasted. So yeah. actually, this this is the more uh, like toned down poster. If you look oh. up, there's really? a poster for this movie that just looks fucking psycho- uh, psychedelically insane. Nice. I'll have to pull it up. Yeah, but they went with the like sky eh. portal. Yeah, the sky portal one. Um, okay, so. Next week, we're going to watch the number one Uh most voted for movie, which kind of surprised me, but this is what it is. So this is what we're watching. Next week, we're watching Frank Henenlotter's Brain Damage. I don't know anything about this. This has been on my list for a while. Okay, there you go. Because we've done (laughs) Frankenhooker and and Basket Case, so this is the other one. Brain Damage. This has been on my list for a while. This is going to be wild. This is going to be fucking wild. (laughs) All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.